Okay. I call this regular session the Wetzel County Schools to order. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Mr. Castello and follow with a moment of silence. Anyone not wishing to participate may stay seated. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Academy. Hi, thank you for having us tonight. My name is Danny Bassett and I am the LifeWise Director for Wetzel County. I have with us some of our board members. They were originally the steering committee and have been working on this for a couple years. We have Dan Betts, Wayne Lauder, Joe Smith, and Dale Dungeon. So thank you all for having us. Um, I have a short video from Joel. He is our CEO and founder that explains a little bit about the program. And then I have a short slideshow. Before I get started, has anybody ever heard of LifeWise Academy? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Hi, I'm Joel Penton, founder and CEO of LifeWise Academy. Thank you so much for everything you are doing to serve students in your community as a public educator. And thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about LifeWise Academy. You're watching this video because there's a team in your community that has been working through the 10-step launch process to launch a local LifeWise Academy. They've been working hard making sure all their ducks are in a row so that we are presenting to you a plan that is well thought out and prepared for success. My job is simple, just want to cover five quick things. Number one, the LifeWise mission. Number two, our philosophy. Number three, a bit of the LifeWise story, our organizational history. Number four, uh, what the local team has done so far. And number five, some practical next steps. So number one, the LifeWise mission. LifeWise exists to positively impact students, schools, and communities through a Bible-based, character-focused, release time religious instruction program. That's a mouthful. Here's what release time is. The Supreme Court ruled in 1952 that public school students can be released from school during school hours to receive religious instruction provided the program meets three criteria. Number one, being off school property. Number two, privately funded. And number three, with parental permission. We know that release time impacts students positively because independent studies shows that when students are engaged in religious activities, Great things happen. Academics go up. Mental health improves. Character is developed. You see things like risk factors go down, and that's what we're seeing in our programs. We hear stories every day of the impact on students. We know that LifeWise is impacting students positively, and when the students are impacted, the whole school is impacted, as well as future generations of citizens in the community. And so that's why LifeWise exists. Our philosophy is very simple. It's threefold. We keep things legal, we keep things simple, and we keep things practical. Uh, we are well aware of the importance of keeping public and religious instruction separate and adhering to all federal, state, and local laws and policies. And so if a situation arose where you as a school uh, offered to maybe print permission slips for the LifeWise program, we would respectfully say thank you, 
but no thank you, because it's important we don't spend a single penny of the public money on the LifeWise program, so we keep things legal. We also keep them simple. Yes, LifeWise is a Christian program, it is a religious program, but we do not delve into the finer details of religious doctrine. We focus on the largest themes of the Bible, the topics and the things that are most central to all people. And number three, we keep things practical. Uh, we don't want our instruction to be simply conceptual. Every single lesson ties to a practical character trait. We cover things like generosity, gratitude, responsibility, sacrifice, things that every single child needs, things in fact that every single adult needs. So let me tell you a little bit of our organizational story. We launched our first programs back in just 2019. We launched in two rural school districts and we saw incredible impact. So going into 2020, even though we were in the middle of a uh, international pandemic, as many schools and organizations were keeping their doors closed, LifeWise actually grew to serve a few additional schools. It went so well that we said, wow, students and parents and schools seem to love this. Let's try to serve 25 schools by 2025. That was our big goal, 25 by 25. And the very next year, we found ourselves serving 36 schools. <laughs> we realized, wow. We must not be very good at setting goals. Um, let's set some bigger goals. And, uh, and things have not slowed down. In fact, it's spreading like wildfire. Today, as I make this video, LifeWise is serving more than 300 schools across more than a dozen states, and we're seeing an incredible impact. I share those numbers with you, not to try to impress you, but simply to impress upon you that, uh, number one, those numbers represent students' lives being impacted. We expect over 35,000 students this year to be enrolled in LifeWise classes. And the second reason I want you to uh, hear those numbers is so you can know that this thing really is possible, really is doable. We understand that every school district is different, every building is different, every bell schedule is different. However, we are seeing LifeWise uh, happen essentially everywhere, whether it's the inner city, whether it's a suburb, whether it's rural, or whether it's elementary, whatever level, we're seeing it happen and we're so excited about the opportunity to see it happen in your community. And so let me tell you about the local effort. Your local team has been working through our 10-step launch process. Step number one, they collected signatures in the community of people who are simply saying, yes, we would like to see this happen locally. We asked them to do that to demonstrate to us that there is adequate interest to launch and sustain an effective program. They have done that. They've also formed a steering committee representing multiple churches, and that steering committee has met with members of our staff to formulate a logistical plan for your local community. I keep saying the word local because that's what it is. It's a local effort. Uh, we're based out of Columbus, Ohio. However, our staff is simply supporting, simply providing resources to your local community. And so that logistical plan that they've put together is in the room right now. It's probably in your hands. And so the practical next steps are simply for you and the local team present to read through and talk through that plan about what it might look like for LifeWise to serve your local students. Ultimately, all that we'd be looking for is some sort of acknowledgement, written acknowledgement from, from you that LifeWise is moving forward. As a school official, you cannot explicitly encourage or discourage participation in the program. However, you are free to coordinate, to cooperate uh, with details, and so we would just ask whether it's an email or whatever, some sort of written acknowledgement, as well as a point person the local team can work with to iron out the details. I have said enough. It's time for you in the room to have some discussion. Please don't hesitate to reach out to our staff or reach out to me personally if you have any questions. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time and for all you do for students. Now, I only have 12 of these, so first I want to make sure board members get them. Who are all the board members? Mike, stay in the house here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Like I said, I'm going to go out. Okay. 
share. Okay. set standards. 
Yes, there is a very thorough application process that each teacher candidate must go through to be considered for the role. Um, you can see up there, you can check out the application. After the applications are reviewed, we interview, they'll interview the board, then they're screened, and then we hire. Um, a lot of the teachers that we have applying right now um, are retired. So a couple of them are retired. Uh, they have to have two years teaching experience, whether that be in a Sunday school classroom or in a public school. And how does LifeWise program oversee their individual teachers and are there set standards? Each teacher goes through training along with additional ongoing opportunities. There's training at the corporate level, and then we will have training at our county level. Um, the curriculum is set, which limits deviation. So they have to stick to what is provided. Um, so teachers also must go through yearly evaluations, similar to public educators, where I sit in and I have a checklist of things that they are doing correctly or that they need to improve on. So how does LifeWise fit into a school schedule? So that varies. Um, from school to school, you know, even in the county, it would vary school to school. Um, most schools integrate release time into their weekly specials rotation. Um, so they could choose LifeWise or library or tech or study hall or music or something like that. Um, but never, ever do we want a student to miss a mandatory core or anything like that. So, you know, if there's no time for LifeWise because they don't want to devalue their specialist classes, um, that is fine. We'll work with administration. Um, it could be a recess. It could be lunch in recess or something like that. Um, like I said, each of those is individual to the school and what they feel is best. Um, if a school offers LifeWise, won't they allow other programs to be offered as well? The answer is yes. Um, it is possible for other programs to spring up and they should be allowed. Um, we are confident in the valuable message of LifeWise and trust parents to choose a program that is best for their children. Okay. So the next step is of course board approval. Um, then we would meet with the principal and start talking about logistics and what they feel is best for their school. And we have an anticipated launch date, it's very hopeful, of January 22nd. We pick that date because that gives the students two weeks to come back from Christmas break, get back into routine, and then we can start the program for those that want to do that. So thank you for your time. And if there is any additional questions, that you would have. So we can either, we have it listed on here for discussion. It is on the agenda to discuss it, so we okay. can discuss it. Because okay. usually if we have like a delegation, we can't. But this is on the agenda. And we can either ask questions now, or we can pull it off to later to where it's listed for discussion. Any suggestions? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, if, we had a, if somebody had a clarity question, you could ask her while she's standing there, but we can't discuss anything about it until we get until to, to the vote part. Okay. Yeah. Can I say something? Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to add that uh, this is free to the kids and the parents. Uh, all, all funding is uh, properly generated through our fundraising. And um, it's non-denominational. Uh, we represent four churches here. Uh, we've had five more churches involved with the steering committee. So it's not just one faith pushing their ideas. Mm -hmm. This is set, uh, uh, plug and play. Uh, the Gospel Project uh, is a company that puts together uh, Sunday school curriculums and LifeWise has contracted with them. Uh, the curriculum, you'll see the curriculum, and it's a five-year curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's the same throughout all, uh, all through 300 uh, Black Lives Academies. And um, the Presbyterian Church, just right down the street from New Martinsville Grade School on Benjamin Drive, uh, went out, out, out of, they're not in this anymore, uh, Dave and Donna Schramm uh, bought it. It's the Spark Center, you probably know, and that's where we'll be having our classes. So we'll be able to escort the children after signing them out down the brand new sidewalk. Sign in, sign outs will be very strict. And we want to protect the children. And that's another thing. Um, if a parent came to the door wanting to 
check out a child, you go to a dentist appointment, we would say, you need to go to the school. We would escort the child back to the school and sign them in, and then the school is up to the school to release them to the parent. Um, we don't do any of that. We actually ask if they have an appointment that day to not even send them down. So, if there's any more questions, if not, I'll let you get on your meeting. I do have a question. You had said it was going to be K-2. We are hoping to start with kindergarten first and second. Okay, I had heard from someone that it was going to be 3-5, so that's why I was... Oh, okay. I was curious about that. Okay. Yeah. That's um, a starting point that we want. I mean, eventually our goal is to be all the way, you know, through high school. Um, on the high school level, it is actually college credit, and um, it's through university, um, and to be in every school in the county, you know, but this is just a starting point for us. Great question. Um, I have a couple. I if anybody else wants to jump in. Okay. All right. Um, so when, when the students come over, Having taught at that school for almost 37 years, <clears throat> caves in one building, one wing, and one two's clear over in another one. Will they K one and two all go at the same time, or do they go three different times? Um, upon board approval tonight, I will contact the principal tomorrow um, because we only have three rooms in the Spark Center, okay. so we may have to take um, once a week. You know what I mean? It's once a week. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that was the agreement. Yeah, it was once a week for now. Um, just because if if we take if 20% of the classes sign up, that's about 89 students. So we're going to have to break them down a little bit, um, just to you know logistics, you know, as a starting point with that. And for your teachers, will you have substitutes that have been vetted and trained too? Yes. Because they're sick. Yes, they go through the same process as the teachers. Um, you know, we'll only hire full-time teachers for the classes that we need, and then um, we'll have substitutes after that. And actually, I'll be going through the teacher training too, so if there is an emergency, I can step in and do that too, and I can be a better support to the teachers. If a child says they don't want to go one week, but, the parent, but the parent has signed the paper for them to go? They can stay. We don't force anybody. Okay. And um, then if the parent has a problem, you can just have them call me. And, and there will be out. no extra work put on the teachers? No. The school teachers? Okay. No. We want to be a support to the teachers. Yeah. Is the target project beginning in New Martinsville at New Martinsville School? Actually, this is the first program to start in the state of West Virginia. It's all over Ohio. It's in Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Arkansas, Kansas. But this is Arizona, but this is the very first one in West Virginia. So you would be the pilot program. People will be looking to you guys. No other schools besides New Martinsville School would be involved initially. Is that correct? Initially, yes. Okay. You know, with this brand new program, we don't want to. We want to do well. Yeah. Anybody else have a question at this time? Okay. okay. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate Thank that, you. and we will address it when we get back where it is on the agenda. Thank you. Next thing is Mrs. Porter, American Education Week Proclamation. Okay. Would you like me to read it? Mm -hmm. All right, the American Education Week Proclamation, November 13th to the 17th, 2023. Whereas public schools are the backbone of our democracy, providing your people with the tools they need to maintain our nation's precious values of freedom, civility, and equity. And whereas by equipping young Americans with both practical skills and broader intellectual abilities, schools give them hope for and access to a productive future. And whereas education employees, be they substitute educators, cooks, custodians, teachers, bus operators, secretaries, maintenance mechanics, aides, or librarians work tireless to serve our children and communities with care and professionalism. And whereas schools are common Community linchpins bringing together adults and children, educators and volunteers, business leaders and elected officials in a common enterprise. Now, therefore, we, the Wetzel County Board of Education, serving as Wetzel County Schools, do hereby proclaim November 13th through the 17th, 2023, as the 102nd Annual Observation of American Education Week. As an expression of our gratitude, we will dismiss school at 1215 on Wednesday, December 20th, so that the holiday break can begin early. Staff may leave following the departure of the last bus. Best wishes for an enjoyable and rewarding school year.
I now will have the Board of Education sign our proclamation. Everybody. Thank you. thing on our agenda is superintendent's information. Oh no, I'm sorry, I skipped it. How many times do I have to do that? Mr. Kendall from Wetzel County Education, Education Association is speaking as a delegation. Sorry about that. Um, please. Yeah, I am. I'll tell you. I'm getting into the habit of that. It's not on purpose. <laughs> it's, you know you have five minutes. You've spoken before. We can't discuss it with you at that time. You and then you speak to us. <coughs> Just, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Okay. Um, it's February. That was correct. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a sprint. Um, at the February 28th board meeting, I first spoke to the board about the concerns that we have, the, our organization, and about everybody in the county. And I'm willing to say that our fellow organization, too, have the same concerns, and we do communicate fairly well. <coughs> Um, but the concerns we have regarding the sub shortage, the vacancies, and the staff retentions. Uh, this evening, you have before you a policy, uh, GCEAR, on second reading. This policy revision changes the daily rate for subs and um, should make working in Wetzel County more attractive to substitutes. Um, the shortage will still exist and it will continue. But this is a big step. I'm actually I'm really impressed with the policy. I'll tell you that. Um, it's a big step in the right direction, and I urge to pass this policy tonight. Uh, I also want to thank the county office and Mr. McPherson for stepping up and making this revision and doing the work to put this through. Um, that's step one. Um, as I said before, staff retention is still a concern. Uh, we've lost a number of educators, and I believe we're losing two more tonight. Um, additionally, I've talked to other educators who are contemplating making change in the future. They're not leaving because of facilities or anything like that. The number one issue is the counties are going to pay more. And right now, that's true in most of the uh, surrounding counties. And I've had to make some changes here. Uh, forgive me why I go through my scratches here. Um, the obvious solution for retention is to increase pay. It's been a while since the county has actually increased pay for most non-administrative personnel. And this could be done in a few different ways. For example, the base, and I know that's sometimes difficult to do, but we also have the bonus out there. And we have discussed this with staff and we've been assured that they're looking at things and ways to increase the retention. We appreciate that, and we stand uh, ready to help them if they ever have any need for our help or suggestions or want to bounce things around off of us. Um, but just when I spoke earlier, I paraphrased a certain movie and said that if you pay them, they'll come. I want to remind you a little different tonight if you pay them, they will stay. So, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Mr. Kendall. Okay, superintendent's information. Okay, in front of you or in your packet, you should have a light blue booklet. So if you'd look through this, I'd like for you to look and see all of the wonderful things that each of our schools are doing uh, this week for Ameri American Education Week. Joe Beth was so gracious to put this together for us. Um, and I hope that you've gotten to or will be able to attend some of the things that our schools are doing, but I thought it was important for us to showcase in this format so that you have a nice snapshot. Okay, that's all I have for today. There's a lot there. So the next thing 
is going to be the superintendent's recommendation on approval of minutes from the regular meeting October 24th, 2023, and special meeting from November 3rd, 2023. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. It's been moved by Mr. Castello. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Price. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Now under personnel matters, that's part B, resignations, service personnel, extracurricular, mentor teachers, and leaves of absence. Do I have a motion for the approval of superintendent's recommendations as outlined under personnel matters? So moved. So moved by Mr. Price. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mrs. Nice. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. Under routine matters, we have a chaperone volunteer list for Magnolia and Long Drain, a request to use school facilities, a work release, and out-of-state trips. Do I have a motion for the approval of the superintendent's recommendations as listed under routine matters? So moved. So moved by Mr. Castello, second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Glasscock. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, treasurer's report. I have two items for asking for approval tonight. One, item A is approval for payment bill for the month of October, which you have in your packet. And it's been a busy month. Um, <laughs> from upstairs, Kathy Hoffman, Christy Shriver, um, out of the whole staff. I keep naming them, but... Uh, but uh, I'm very appreciative of the hard work they've been doing to try and keep up, which is a never-ending task. I'm asking for approval of payment bills there for month of October. On item B, I'm asking for some supplements to be approved tonight. I'll go through them really quickly. The mastery-based education at Magnolia High School in the amount of $10,000, the state grant that's helping with some supplies and professional development for some of the teachers there. There's a CT, couple CTE grants here. There's the AET record books that track some of the VOAG, um, some things from the VOAG program. The CTE career exploration at Hundred High School, two thousand dollars. Two state grants there. There is in the child nutrition world. There is the fourth round of supply chain assistance grant of seventy thousand three hundred sixty-three dollars and eighteen cents. <coughs> Something we've never seen before COVID is. <coughs> supply chain assistance grant. So apparently there's still some money out there that they're helping us, which will just, you know, lower our county contribution for uh, what we do in child nutrition. And then there's a small grant of two thousand dollars there for from scratch training grant, which is the we've been working on. And then the next page you will see a budget supplement for special education. Basically, there was an additional amount for this new teacher boot camp. That I already brought that to the board once, and there was a, but there were some more expenses, more teachers that went down, so the state's giving us money for that. And then there is a state, or I'm sorry, that's federal government giving us money for that. State special education grant, a little bit different than what they projected in the spring, $722 less. Actually, I need to check that. But that's seven hundred and twenty two dollars less. And then Valley High School has a Marathon Community Investment Program. Uh, Marathon has donated fifteen hundred dollars to for supplies at Valley High School and uh, and uh, some uh, parent involvement supplies that they're going to do out there. And then the next page, rural and low income. These are all the title grants that just got approved. So I'm bringing those to the board. The only one that wasn't already in the budget was this Rural and Low Income Schools Grant um, that we used to fund a, uh, another interventionist. This one used at Payton City, but we have them all over the county. It just so happens that this will fund a teacher there. We didn't get it last year. We've been getting them for several years, but for some strange reason, we didn't qualify last year. Well, we qualify again. Um, the teacher never went away. We just picked it up out of county. It goes back into this federal grant now. And then the, there's a small difference in Title II and Title I. Title two is a small difference. Title one was a cut of twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand dollars from what we had last year. Um, and finally, 
English is a second language, so we get a small state grant there, $487. It helps with some of the travel from some of our teachers for those programs. That's all that I have. Mm -hmm. Before we move on to vote, I just want to say, sometimes we look at all these numbers and like Marathon helping out, we do really appreciate yes. the help that we get from, from community and organizations. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve both A and B of the Treasurer's Report payment of bills? and going over the transfers and increases in budget. So moved. Moved move by Mrs. Nice. I'll second it. Um, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, number seven, second reading of the revised Wetzel County policy. Um, this is the one that is the substitute teacher arrangements. This is on second reading. Do we have a motion to approve that? So moved. I, I ask one question. Okay, okay. sure. All right, so is the in, is the intent would this be would this be start date or do we would do we you want it would it help us to December establish first. a start date? December first. So I think we probably ought to have that in the motion. Yes. I think yeah. I think it would just help you yeah, if we right. put the if we put the start date in the motion just just so that it's clear. Yes. That this is what the board is approving. So uh, I, I apologize for not catching oh, no, the motion. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I I move for for. A, Second reading approval with the addition of the December the 1st start date. Uh, can I say one thing? I just want to make sure it's clear out there for those substitutes listening. If it starts December 1st, they won't see that pay until December 30, 30th because it's the 1st through the 15th is paid on the 30th. So I just want to make sure that there's, that's a delay. there's going to be a delay. Yes. yes. Thank you. Okay, so it's been moved by Mr. Castillo. I'll second it. Is there any more discussion? Okay, but then all those in discussion. But their pay will start December 1st, correct? Mm -hmm. right? And then we always run two weeks behind. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So it's been moved by Mr. Castillo, seconded by Mrs. Fawner. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, then all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we're down to the board discussion and possible action. We have two things, the school-based probation officer program and the Likewise Academy Religious Release Time program. So the first thing listed is the school-based probation officer program. At the last meeting, Mr. Hostetler gave us a packet to read. that gave us the information on it. Um, does anybody want to make any comments or have any questions regarding it? We did ask um, uh, some of our principals that were available to give their input on that as well. I have Mr. Wilson and Ms. Dr. Emsch and uh, Ms. Jackie back there. Yes. Um, would you mind if they oh, no, gave please, a little? Want, sure. Okay. Would you mind giving your thoughts on having this? It's a county-wide general <coughs> probation officer that would serve the students of Wetzel County. So, Mr. Wilson, if you could tell us your um, thoughts on this. I uh, appreciate it. <coughs> Appreciate the time, President Fawner, Superintendent Porter, uh, directors, and everyone here. Uh, we think it's important to have another resource to support our students, uh, most importantly, in the building. Uh, some of the things that me and Mrs. Miller discussed, uh, you know, the probation officers, they, they conduct drug screenings, they attend court hearings, they monitor juvenile status offenders placed under supervision as a result of truancy, they conduct field supervision and home visits, they can they, the officers also work closely with community agencies such as youth report centers schools community service work providers the department of human services other court services other state agencies in order to link services for persons under the probation officer supervision and any resource that we can get in our schools to help our students uh, we want in our building so you know from magnolia that's that's what we're reporting on the for a probation officer in the building. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Emsch? Yes, absolutely. All right, so... <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. I'll note you there. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm at home. I'm behind a TV. So. <laughs> Essentially what this is, this is another tool that we can use to help kids reach success. Unfortunately, right now, with a lot of the uh, law enforcement, just like every other organization right now, they are backtracked and they're, they're plugged up. So for us to have easier access to those supports, especially for the grade levels that we service, that's going to provide that early intervention type of services to prevent some harsher penalties maybe down the road. And uh, again, this is yet another tool we can use in our tool belt 
to keep folks on the right track, to keep them out of the uh, uh, judicial system, and keep them in our buildings longer. Thank you. <coughs> Do you have any questions for me, or who, who would well, expound field, on that? Field, it, field, it, yeah. field this question to whomever can okay. maybe address. But if somebody could just give me just a little, and I think I know, but, but just um, to give me a little bit of a distinction between what our PRO folks do, you know, and, and what this job would be. What, what are some of the distinctions between those two things? Because we have those officers in all our buildings. Right. Um, but, so but they, they are there for the legal aspect. So if a crime is committed, they're also there for, um, you know, just seeing them there and building that relationship with students to help them make better choices. But they're, they're actually there if we have a crime committed. That's like their, their basis. That's what they're allowed to do. By putting one, this is just one person for the entire county, as the probation officer, once that police officer has to deal with a student maybe that has brought an illegal substance to school, that was in a physical fight at school, that is true, which is a huge problem we're facing now, the, um, our, our person that would be the probation officer would then actually be able to enforce that. So he would be able to monitor the students that are truant, go to the students' houses that were truant. If a student was on, for example, let's say a student, two students fought and it was uh, charges were filed on that that person. What's happening, as Mr. Wilson said, that our system is so clogged up. This will be a specific person just for our juveniles to make sure that that probation period, let's say six months, was followed. Um, in the minds of a principal at the school, if somebody is in an altercation or brings an illegal substance, is in the court system, and does not get probation, there's really no teeth in that. So in this instance, for example, if somebody was to do something right now, they would, could be on probation until the end of the school year, which would, one, make them have to comply by a curfew, uh, make sure they come to school, obey their parents at home as well as at the school. There, therefore, leading to that student getting a better education because they now have some teeth in that, what is expected of them, and also then helping with the rest of the school because that disruptive student or student that's habitually in trouble um, would then not be hopefully causing those kind of problems. I've witnessed myself seeing probation work for young people. It, kids will say, I can't fight, I'm on probation. I, I can't do that, I'm on probation. It kind of gives them an out as well, but it really gives us as educators some teeth to help those kids get out of the system, maybe a diversionary period for them so that like Mr. M said, they don't wind up later on in the system. Thank you. I, sure. Is and, that is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and and we're talking one that's going to service the entire Bletcher county schools. County schools. Right. And and we're funding that. We're, well, there's a grant. Yes. There's some grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will fund half of it for the first oh, two okay. years. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then after that, we would take over if we wanted to continue. Just, I think that's what I read in the yeah, Yes, correct. Was. But it's for the entire county. Understood. So we would provide a space for that person, that probation officer, but he would serve as truancy or discipline issues or criminal issues in the entire Wetzel County okay. Schools, just for our juveniles. Thank you. And I believe I understood from being at a meeting today that you all polled all the principals in the county and they all responded in favor of the program. Yes, I asked Mr. McPherson to... Um, not, a couple have not responded yet, but everybody who responded responded in the affirmative. And, and, you know, having been a high school principal at one point in time, it seems like a long time ago, before that system was clogged up, it was very normal to make use um, of a probation officer with at the school. And it's, I don't think, it, I didn't realize it had become so much less of an option than it is now. Um, yeah, but when I was checking, I actually got some a couple of yeses before I could finish a response. So, and that's why we did ask for some of our principals to join us that um, feel that this service would be well appreciated in their school buildings. Okay. Anybody else? So discussion? you said that they would be the grant would cover half. The grant would cover half for the first two years, and then if we decided to consider continue that program, we would have to take that person. Are we going to pick up the other half? Are we planning to, when you say we have, there's still another half out. Yeah, yes, we, we, would, so we, we would take the other half, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how much we're talking about? So it would depend on the level of education um, of the person that takes the job. So our half could would possibly, with rough estimates, be about 22000 So it's different tiers. Yeah, there are different tiers in that packet that we're given. Yes. Okay. Any other discussions? Mrs. Shepard, did you have anything that you wanted to say too? 
Thank you. I would just like to say that I think our families desperately need this. We have um, had some incident, incidents at our school just this last month where we have parents and grandparents that are raising kids that are in middle school and they just, our kids are angry, our ki you know, and they're, they're acting out because they're angry and the grandparents aren't able to control them. They're looking to us for help and there's only so much help at this point that we can give. And like Mrs. Porter stated, there's just, I mean, after so long, there's no, we have no teeth. We have nothing to hold over. And it's not like you want to hold something over these kids as a punitive thing, but it's just, they're heading down the wrong path. And we, these families just, they need that support. They need something to help them rein, rein their, their kids in. I mean, they just, so that they can get them to school and they can, our, our families are hurting and I just think it would be a great support, especially to our parents and great grandparents that are raising kids that are displaying, we're making some poor choices right now. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, then I will make the motion that we um, take part in this probation officer program with the grant paying for half of it and Wetzel County Schools paying for the other half. Is there a second? I'll second that. It's been moved by Mrs. Farner. It's been seconded by Mr. Glasscock. Is there any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do we have any idea when this might be effective? Well, now that it has been uh, um, approved, we'll work with getting somebody hired with the um, probation office. So can you as soon as we can fill that position. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now to LifeWise Academy Religious Release Time Program. I think it's interesting that both of these things that are listed here are, are ways that we want to help our kids and help our families. So. Okay, so under LifeWise Academy Religious Release Time Program, before we make a motion, or is there any, any other questions or any discussion that anybody has? Yeah, I have one. Mm -hmm. Do we plan to extend this out in the county eventually? Yes. Your plans is? Yes, our plan is to go through high school and every school in the county. We just have to start somewhere. So what about where you would hope this, like out on the short line area, for instance? Um, when we get to that point, I'll, we'll physically go out there and we'll speak to the churches, we'll look at community centers, and we'll talk to people and about where, you know, logistically that would be. Um, at some point, we may have to um, bus kids somewhere. Right now, we're fortunate with the Spark Center being right beside the elementary school. Um, we do have procedures for that. <laughs> um, we would hire somebody with a CDL and endorsements. And um, we have specific um, regulations for that. Um, but that's going to be very specific for each school on what we do. So. Right. Anybody else have any other question? I was just kind of surprised that it could start that soon. Yeah, if, to. if that works well with the teachers, I know <laughs> that. Like, yeah. I mean, if, if that's a problem when we speak to the principal, yes. we. That's an arbitrary date. That's one that, that we kind of set that we were a goal for us. Um, you know, these gentlemen have been working for two years. <laughs> and um, they're a great group of guys. They care about the kids. And um, like I said, you know, those are arbitrary. My, my concern with that date that soon is I know how long it takes to get a schedule to work out at that school being so large. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty right. overwhelming. So. Yeah. You, know, you, you can shoot for that, but I, I, I would want yes. you to speak with Mrs. Walton and work it out because that's a, that would be a major. Yes, major yes. Thing. And if the school is not on board with that, then we'll we'll change that. Yeah, because I'm just thing. thinking of the kids coming from different sections of the building just to meet with you and get, yeah. Mrs. Walton has to be involved. Mrs. Walton has yes. to be involved. Yeah. You lunch, lunch you periods and everything else. Yeah. My initial thought was like lunch and recess are back to back. Right. You know, yeah. and it's once a week. Maybe the school cooks, you know, like when they go on field trips, they get the little brown bag, pack them a lunch, bring them over. They can sit as we get started, eat their lunch, you know, talk to them and get started, um, and then take them back. And um, once a week, you know, they're going to miss recess, but I think they'll enjoy 
enjoy it. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Van Wert, and I actually got to go and see the kids in the classrooms. We were kind of observing from afar, but um, it was very, very neat. The kids were so excited to be there, and um, I'm, I'm very excited. I wish, you know, we could start tomorrow, but... <laughs> It'll have to be good communication. I yes. mean, just because, too, if there's two overlays, if there's snow day or <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, technology day at home day. We um, um, you know. were just having discussions about doing a walkie-talkie <coughs> with the school. You know, so that's immediate with the secretary. has got it right there on her desk. You know, um, there's things we've discussed about um, problems with the kids misbehaving. Um, I actually got to talk to some of the teachers, and she said she had a student that would not sit down. When she asked him to sit down, he said, I don't have to listen to you. <laughs> and she said, if you don't sit down, you'll have to leave. And the volunteer walked them back, contacted the school, and they walked them back to the school. So we don't have any kind of punishments other than, you know, this is a volunteer program. If you don't want to be here, you don't have to. You know? <coughs> so I want to give, um, if anybody wanted my card, if you have any questions even after the meeting, on a personal level or anything, um, give me a call, give me an email, text me. Because you guys have had, well, not just you, but I mean, where you guys are at all across, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you've worked with multiple types of schedules that you could kind of piggyback off of. You're not reinventing anything, so collaboration with the teachers is just where you're going to be doing most of your... Yeah, it comes down to basically what the school board or the principal prefers. You know, if they don't want them to be specialist, we'll work with recess or lunch. You know, if they want to put that in a rotation, okay, we're great with that, you know, so... Did you get a card, Mr. Price? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, so do I have a motion for the LifeWise Academy Religious Release Time Program? I'll make that motion. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Glasscock to have the LifeWise Academy Religious Release Time Program. Is there a second? I'll second that. It has been moved by Mr. Glasscock and seconded by Mrs. Fawner. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Board member committee reports. Okay. Would you like to start with Mr. Kimball? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. You jumped ahead. I did. <laughs> 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 it wasn't just me. Okay. Um, do you have anything from Lock Tide? Nothing from Lock Tide? Nobody else? Do you want to give our committee reports? Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to join the board? <laughs> Okay, so now we're under other items. Discussion policy 2322, West Virginia Support and Accountability, school performance, student outcomes, academics, and student achievement. I'm just so excited to have yeah. Mr. Kimball report on some of the things we've been working on um, for students uh, as far as CTE world goes. So I'll, I'll start off with some of the stuff that we're doing today or this week that's in your, your, um, your folder. I know today we were able to take some kids down to Parkersburg for world of work our electrical students and our uh, welder welding students were able to go down there for a field trip to see some of the opportunities that await them once they graduate and you know the the adults were on the trip so the kids were great and the opportunities they got to ask questions to, to different uh, unions and stuff like that so it's great tomorrow we have our national technical honor society induction ceremony i think we have eight Juniors that are going to be getting inducted tomorrow at 10, so if you're free, 10 o'clock at, uh, at the center. And then we're, don't, we're, we're trying to get everyone basic life-saving skills, so uh, our welders and electrical students are going to be partaking in uh, CPR first aid, Stop the Bleed, on Thursday, and that's put on by the, the health department. Ms. Schuyler is uh, providing those services. Uh, and, you know, we, we met you want me to talk about when we met last week? I do. Uh, we met <laughs> last week about uh, adding another program out the center, and I think uh, it's it's a pro. We're talking, and we've already kind of discussed this already. It's for the Pro Star Baking and Pastry uh, program, and we were very happy with the, the way that the discussions uh, have went. Uh, I would like to start tomorrow, but unfortunately <laughs> my timetable is not what actually is going to happen. So, but I think it was, we had a lot of folks involved in the conversations and I think the vision that we all have, it should be the best uh, ProStar program in the state. That's what I want. I want it to be the, a gym that 
other folks want to come up and see and see what's going on. And I think it's just, I, I can't wait for it to happen. It can't happen soon enough. Well, I'm excited to see us offering more at the Tech Center. Me too. Because it needs to grow, and that's the wonderful way to get it started. Yeah, I, I think, I'm, I'm just excited. I would just like to add, a student that was here last year that went through that program is working on a house, like right next to mine. So going every day and seeing him doing electrical work, like every day, real work, yeah. And how that prepared him to do that, it's, I, I just love what's going on and what you can do for kids. And I, I did have one here, uh, December 15th, this is something new we're going to try this year. It, we're going to do something called the Tech Express. It's kind of a play on the Polar Express. We're going to try, we're going to bring all the third graders in to go through the, the Tech Center and they'll go through different stations of all the CTE. Uh, I offered it to all the CTE teachers in the county to bring a couple, two or three kids in and do an activity with the third graders. So it's going to be really neat. So if you're available on the 15th, uh, I think that's something something that I'm excited. I know the teachers are excited and the kids are just as excited as the, excuse me, the teachers to put it on for the third graders. We thought third grade was, they still have that, you know, it's mag magical little time. Uh, and so, you know, it's, the plans are coming coming together and it's just it, it's gonna be really neat. That's good. So. We should also mention Dr. Emsch back there in the corner. Oh that yeah I'm, I'm sorry. He's behind uh, the TV. Yeah I couldn't <laughs> see the TV blocked me but uh, he was able we already know that he's already gotten up to about a $15,000 grant through Project Lead the Way. Uh, I've been contacted by the State Department and that's going to Project Lead the Way has some really neat courses. I'm not sure he's picked the three yet that he's going to to do, but there's different uh, classes like uh, app design, uh, robotics, medical detectives. There's just uh, there's a plethora of different things that they put on that that'll get the CTE back into a little bit more in depth into the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And I know that we had two other schools that have applied for that grant as well. I think New Martinsville and Long Grain. So those two have also applied for that grant, which is really big for these kids because it's something new, different, and exciting, just something to get the kids excited about going to class because they may be doing app design or something that they may not normally do in, you know, in a regular CT class there. So we're trying to just not at the top level where we're doing the CT, we're trying to get it down into the younger levels and that's why, that's the whole Tech Express thing try to get them involved with the tech center, see what we have out there. And, and I will add, I know I'm talking a long time, but the, the eighth graders that are coming, the eighth graders that are coming, it's been, it was rough kind of around the edges to get started, but it's all coming together. The kids love, the, for the most part, I think the kids like coming out there and uh, they're getting some college credit as well, which that's turned into a real positive with the eighth graders, uh, getting that one hour college credits really, Need to see them do well and exceed in that. So, thank you. All right, and our uh, special ed rock star, Mrs. McLaughlin. So I have a positive to sh a positive share uh, from this week. Um, we, at, as you know, we New Martinsville School uh, was once a comprehensive support and improvement school, a CSI school, and now year two we are uh, part of the ATS pro uh, process, which is additional targeted support. So we're no longer a CSI school, but year two, additional targeted support, where we still have to set goals and have activities in place based on the recommendations of coming out of a CSI school, being a CSI school. So this week we had our first visit from the state, um, and the comments shared after they observed um, and just looked at the activities that we have in place to support our goals, um, dem it, it was just our school is demonstrating uh, sure progress. So uh, I just wanted to share some of the things that the team that came from the state said about New Martinsville School. Um, first of all, there is a leadership team that um, helped compose the goals and the activities that are in place based on the uh, state's recommendations. So they have writing um, instruction, we're, we're improving that. Um, supplemental service logs, which goes hand in hand with um, our students that are in the classrooms and out in the schools. Um, and those supplemental service logs, they support their IEPs um, and accommodations. Co-teaching strategies, we're working on improving those. Um, and also just some student schedule issues that, um, that came about after the audit. Um, 
so some of the things that the state official said is uh, what you are selling, they are buying, meaning they meaning the students. Um, the culture with the students was very positive because students know who and how to get help. Um, the students are comfortable talking about their school and their teachers. The state said that we are going in a good direction with co-teach. Um, and just to remind you, we've had to really think outside of the box with co-teach because some of the um, vacancy issues that we've faced there. We've actually had to contract a virtual teacher. I was visiting that classroom the day of the visit, um, and we have a teacher on the screen co-teaching with a regular classroom teacher. And the students, it was just like a well-oiled machine. The students were moving in stations. The virtual teacher was actually prompting the students, and they were responding faster sometimes than they do with people in the room. Um, but it was it was very impressive. and. Um, so that good direction with co-teach to the staff and the students um, and the state, they said that we were making progress towards the improvement and we're going in the, in the right direction. All the things that, we're, uh, that Mrs. Walton and her staff are doing are supporting our goals and our activities that the team have, has developed. Things, examples that they gave was they, they couldn't speak highly enough about the iReady um, and the way that we're progress monitoring our students there with the data collection. Um, they uh, complimented how New Martinsville School is a very data-rich school, um, and I also wanted to give a shout out to Mr. Houston and um, Mrs. Staniford for that support because you know their direction has played a part in that too. Uh, monthly data meetings, using data for goal setting, um, progress monitoring. Some of the teachers there had also um, said thank you to SREB for coming in and supporting them with on our recent um, professional learning day with uh, the training that Judy Frank offered on stations um, that, that supported them there. Um, but everything was very positive um, and really there wasn't, there, there was maybe a few little things that we can improve upon but nothing that we can't handle. So just a sh huge shout out to New Martinsville School for their work. Thank you. It's nice to hear. Mr. Houston? I don't know. I can follow. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she came a lot. Next. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just, just talking data. Thank you for the compliment. Um, well. Mrs. Stanford's been working hard on that too. I know uh, uh, Superintendent Porter showed me some uh, data that Mrs. Stanford was looking at with already that I was really impressive. Um, so I really think uh, that all our schools and our districts in the district are really looking more at data than we have, have ever in the past. Um, and we're only going to get better at it. Uh, I can just say that uh, we just finished up our nine weeks uh, pretests, um, and teachers have scored those, and they're getting the results back to me, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that information. What's really great about those nine weeks tests, they're not real long, long, long uh, tests, you know, like 10 questions. Uh, but we should really get great information about what's going on in our classrooms from it because those questions are based on our pacing guides. So if we're teaching it, they, you know, it's going to, it should be reflected in that. Um, you know, we'll have midterm already coming up, and that should give us a good indication of how much how much our kids are growing. Um, I know schools are looking at the already data. We're we're kicking around ideas to kind of make it a little bit more com competitive. I know that I know that Long Grain. I know there's a couple of Long Grain teachers out there, that, but I was still around when the already was coming out. Then I'll make around and say, fifth grade, we were number one this week. We need to continue that. Or we were third this week. We, we need to get a little bit better at that. You know, uh, we need to get that mindset, and, and we're working to try to, to, to get the mindset going that we, you know, that data is going to drive our instruction, and, and hopefully we're going to get the, the progress out of our kids. Um, I had a couple pauses I thought today. I'm not going to elaborate on a big one, but we have a big thing coming this summer if, if it all plays out. Probably one of the biggest things coming to Wetzel County we've ever had. 
Don't and let it be a surprise. I'm not going to tell him. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, but, <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, it'd be bigger than Dolly Parton. I don't know. In the education world. <laughs> In the education world. I, I'm kidding. I, I'm trying right. to follow it. Moving right along. Moving right along. But, uh, right along. but, uh, but uh, also uh, working on summer camp uh, and trying to trying to uh, get dates dates and items booked uh, for some really great training for our staff. That will kind of should build on what we're trying to do. Okay. That's all I have. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hughes. This is This is McPherson. Thank you. He gave me the note. He gave me the note. Nobody can measure up now. I just wanted to note that the technology part department has been very productive. The technology system specialists have com successfully completed over 700 tickets um, since the start of this school year, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and you know, it's a testament to their hard work and dedication to resolving the issues efficiently and in improving the overall tech experience for our students and our staff. Our technology integration specialists, our TISSES, um, they conducted a presentation to our principals called What Can a TISS Do For You? and really to provide insights on how they can support teaching and enhance the student learning through technology. Um, just as a general reminder, we are getting into the holiday season and you may have noticed an increase of strange emails popping up um, <laughs> on your phones or on your computers. Uh, this is prime season for um, email scamming. So that could be someone trying to get into your account. It could be someone trying to get money from you in the form of a gift card. Um, it could be someone pretending to be someone else to make you think that they are in trouble and they need help. Just please, 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 and this is for everyone, staff, students, general public, um, be very aware of who the email is from and the email address. Don't just rely on the name. You know, check that email address as well because if you're getting a, an email from someone that you know who they are and that email address doesn't seem just right, it's probably not. So just as a general reminder, be careful. And I'd like to thank you for helping me out when I was having computer trouble with trying to get into my school email. Yes. So thank you. Mr. Barkas. Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, earlier in the board meeting, we, you guys, just, you all passed the school-based probation officer program, and we talked about how one of the purposes for that would be truancy. Um, to give you an idea, in the past few years, I have met with over 300 families each year for truancy purposes. Um, before the pandemic, the average was about 200 families, so it's been a, a big increase since then. So I want to give you that data. Also, a couple of weeks ago, I attended a safety conference statewide. Um, Glad to report that we're already following the recommendations from the national experts on the guidelines, uh, as well as the drills and exterior and interior safety. There were a few new suggestions that are coming out that we're discussing now. I'm hoping to discuss it more for the next budget season. The number one thing that all of the experts agreed and emphasized across the board was a closed and locked door, um, both outside and inside. So, you know, in Wetzel County, of course, we have been locking the exterior doors for a couple decades now, um, but last school year we passed countywide the policy for the interior doors, um, so that we're ahead of that, so that's a plus. And then in the past couple weeks I've met with all the principals individually to help strengthen that as well. So that's all I want to report. Thank you. Uh -huh. Mr. Lancaster, anything else? No. Mr. McPherson. Um, we're, we're finally making some headway with, um, as, I mean, as you can tell, I fi we're finally okay um, for the most part with substitute aids. We made some, some great strides with uh, Cooks this time around. Um, I've spent um, uh, the past couple days trying to test folks for we need some more substitute custodians and substitute secretaries. I am caught up with it, with the exception of anything in the past three weeks or so with everyone who has applied 
since January 1st of 2023. We've tried to attest well over 200 people that have been to come, um, but we're doing better with the folks who come. They seem to be more interested. Like, I think we're getting some folks who really want to come to work, and uh, we'll keep hammering on that and trying to get those our ranks built back up on the service side. Um, trying to get those December graduates who either, either need full-time teachers or who need <coughs> substitutes. Um, and I will say that well, things are better, but let's keep in mind that better is not necessarily okay yet, but we, you know, we're going to keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anything else? No, that's all. Okay, is there anything else on your other? I, 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 I got a comment on this. Then. I, um, people are going to read the newspapers, and they're going to see the news stories. Oh. COVID era issues as far as funding and all that that extra federal monies and stuff i i'm going to go on the record i was in this room multiple times three of us were sitting up th through uh i want to commend mr lancaster yes. he and his office worked like crazy to do everything the right way and if they're going to come and argue here was an abuse over here in this county and then they're going to come back and nickel and dime a, a clerical issue you didn't write that down right or you didn't submit um you know trying to get a pallet of water in those days was was a nightmare trying to find a box of masks you could buy was was a nightmare and and we're going to bid that out to three different agencies when there's only one that even has the product anyway it, 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 mr it, price i wasn't going to say anything i was giving it the credit that i thought it deserved um <laughs> but I, but and i, and I hesitated that. you notice i no, hesitated because i, I, I don't truly, I truly appreciate that, and I will say that that I don't know that we're one of whether or not we're one of the 37 counties of the 55 that were found non-compliant with COVID funds. I know there were a couple issues, and I mean a couple issues out of millions of dollars spent. One of those, just to give you an example, was iReady scores. You know, iReady is something we've tried to promote and get the, have our, our kids making some progress there. We uh, they one of the findings that they found with us was that. I ready I, using I ready using COVID funds to, to fund the I ready program was fine, but we spent seven hundred and forty dollars on rewarding kids for uh, T-shirts for having the best score. That's not an acceptable use of addressing learning loss. So if that groups us in with some of these counties that truly <laughs> were, because yeah. it was found as you know I argued that and they well blah, blah, blah. It, it was easier to just say okay we won't do it anymore, but that's ridiculous. I'm sorry it's ridiculous. And the other ones were, you know, we're trying to find plexiglass that we needed. And the moment we found, oh, this company has some, if we got three bids, they were going the next day. So we had to, to do that. And that's what a lot of those counties, there's a lot of people mad right now that they're being grouped in with some of the abuse. And it's not in this county. And I, I've shared with you the findings they found, which were with those two issues. Sometimes we didn't get bids because we couldn't get bids. And, and just on a few items. And then the other one was that, that I ready t shirt or you know, so so I appreciate that. Okay. Thank I, you. You, you deserve to be you're, yes. you're, you and your whole staff up there constantly amaze me and appreciate that we have. Thank you. you. I'll pass that on to you. I'll add there was a whole training we went to that talked about and broke it down and that really opened my eyes to see what other counties do too. So not everyone is as efficient as right. you guys. Right. So thank you. <laughs> Okay, so if there's nothing else then, the date and time of the next meeting is December 12th at 6 p.m. Okay, here at the county office. Yes. Okay, all right, so do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. So moved by Mr. Castello. Do we have a second? No, sir. It's been seconded by Mr. Price. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries unanimously. We are done at 7.13 p.m.